Welcome to Australia. No matter how much research you've done, you will still be in for a few surprises. You'll hear some local words and phrases that you don't know, and maybe experience some local ways of doing things that seem strange to you. Don't worry. Your educational institution, like all Australian places of higher education, has been educating international students for many decades. They will help you from the minute you arrive. You will be met at the airport and taken to temporary accommodation, where you can stay while you settle in and find somewhere to live long term. Your institution will also provide you with a student contact officer, whose job is to help you while you're studying in Australia. They will answer your questions and help you adjust to your new life. This is an important feature of your Australia Award. They will make a big difference to you. I meet the students at the airport when they first arrive. I assist them with their accommodation, with their banking, um, with their studies, any problems they're having while they're here and any issues to do with their families. When I came to the university, my student contact officer was right there to welcome each and every one of us with a big smile and a big lunch. And she had made provision for everything. They're awesome. I mean, we can just call on them anytime visit them anytime with any questions. They're always willing to help, always smiling, you know, never seem like frustrated or anything. We are here to take care of our students. Students should be feel welcome and come to talk to us all the time. Students usually need some time to settle down in Sydney and also get used to um, the studying environment and the studying schedule again. Each time I'm faced with uh, an issue maybe regarding my family and I, wanted dire I want direction, I would either call them, uh, go to the office or write an email to them and they have been very, very helpful. They are like family for us, yeah, especially for us who are away from our country. They are our closest family. Before you can begin your course, you will be enrolled in the compulsory introductory academic program, which lasts about six weeks. This course is designed to help you get the most from your formal study and is a great opportunity to start building a support network. It covers academic skills, living costs, national and state laws, support services everything you need to help you to adjust to and enjoy studying in Australia. It runs for about four to five weeks before um, anything else happens at the university. So during that period we get to know the students very well um, and we find that, that that relationship building during that time allows them to know that they can approach us. We get all international students, uh, new arriving international students, and take them to a rainforest about 200 kilometres away. Um, they participate by cooking lunch together, by walking through the rainforest together, um, and it gives them a sense that they're not isolated or alone. We learned about the culture. We learned about how to make a good writing. And we also learn again about the plagiarism. Teaching students little tools, um, such as research skills, um, how to use the library properly, and also how to manage their time properly. In my studies, um, we had to do a lot of critical thinking, critical writing and stuff like that. So I'm very happy that we were introduced to that when I came here in the IAP. It's a whole totally new environment for me. So having gone through IAP, International Academic Program, it actually put me on the right footing. At least 50,000 years ago, people settled in Australia these original inhabitants of our country, the Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, have a rich and unique culture. European explorers visited Australia over the years, and more than 220 years ago, a fleet of ships sent out from Britain arrived in Sydney and began European settlement. In the years since, people have come to live in Australia from every country on Earth bringing with them their religion, food and fashion. Modern day Australia is regarded as a model of multiculturalism, but you'll still need to do a little cultural adjustment at first. 
You just have to open yourself and talk to people. Just don't stay on your own and think that people are going to come to you. I thought that Australians are sometimes cold. Many of them like they do not want to start conversation first, but when I when I started to talk to them, they are very, very friendly. I had a feeling that I'm on my own when I first arrived. And then gradually, when I start building up my network within the, the student network and our lecturers and international staff, I feel at home. You will also see and hear the many ways in which Australia and the Australian way of life are unique. You will hear words and phrases which are uniquely Australian slang. You'll get used to these words. You can learn them from a book or online dictionary of Australian slang. Breakfast, breakfast, like um, is shortened from the, sh the short form of breakfast. So Australians are quite lazy <laughs> saying things. I have this lecturer in one of my classes who keeps saying um, it was a dog's breakfast. And I was wondering, do dogs have breakfast? What does it look like? And then I found out eventually that she meant that, you know, some policy is really messy and all over the place. You will learn that compared to many countries, Australia is quite informal, making it acceptable for you to approach any person for help. You'll be encouraged to address most people by their first name, including the lecturers at your institution. If I have got questions about, you know, certain things that I don't know, then I just contact them and they are really helpful. If we want to, to get somewhere we didn't know where to go, we can always stop someone and they took the time out really to, you know, show us on the map or tell us where to go or search for it on their phones for us and yeah, that really impressed me. Dress in Australia tends to be relaxed and dress codes where they exist, for example in some restaurants, are more likely to ask for smart casual than for suits with collars and ties. In many public places in summer, particularly the beach, acceptable dress is seen by many visitors as immodest. You should not feel that you or your family has to conform to local habits where this is concerned. Your dress, as with other aspects of your life such as diet, will be understood in terms of your culture and will be respected. You know, just have to be aware that people are different in different countries. So if, if you're going to the Gold Coast, you're going to see people not dressed as conservatively as you would in your home country.